We want to quantize the string at this point. We are going to treat the x mu coordinates as d free scalar fields, and then we will quantize them. After that, we will impose the constraints. Remember the constraints we have x dot dot product with x prime equal to zero, and then we also have x dot squared plus x prime squared equal to zero. We define the conjugate momenta phi mu equal to one over two pi alpha prime x dot mu, and uh, this comes from field theory because in general we can define the momenta pi mu alpha as the derivative of uh, the Lagrangian density with respect to d alpha x mu. This is how we usually do that. Remember the Lagrangian density, which is equal to minus 1 over 4 pi alpha prime, square root of minus g, then we have g alpha beta, d alpha x mu, d beta x nu, era mu nu. This simply comes from the Polyakov action. Now remember that uh, we can also choose the flat metric for uh, the Lagrangian according to the invariance in the action if we make a wild transformation we can flatten out this metric tensor and we can make it equal to era alpha beta so we can rewrite the Lagrangian density simply as minus 1 over 4 pi alpha prime then we have d alpha x dot product d alpha x so we can also write it like this which means basically in this case so this notation here simply means d alpha x mu d beta x nu era mu nu era alpha beta so we contract with uh, the Lorentz metric tensors in this case era nu mu or era mu nu there i mean this is a symmetric tensor remember but this is d by d whereas this tensor here is 2 by 2 so do not confuse them usually when i write mu and nu i'm considering d dimensional objects but uh, this this might not be the case every time so you have to be aware that uh, there are some objects which are d by d and other objects which are 2 by 2 and usually for that i will use alpha and beta but i will not uh, let's say focus too much on uh, these uh, labels you have to be able to distinguish between uh, the 2 by 2 objects and the d by d objects now i cannot rule out the possibility that sometimes when doing tensor manipulations i might change mu and nu and i might use um, alpha and beta for dummy indices but uh, we still need to be able to distinguish between 2 by 2 dimensional objects like these ones and d by d dimensional objects like these ones so let's try not to get confused by that now let's take this derivative here so we have d l d d alpha x mu this is equal to minus 1 over 4 pi alpha prime and uh, we can write the derivative of uh, this object this object here so we we can write it as d beta x nu era mu nu era alpha beta and then we have another term plus so when i take the derivative of this second term here i am left with d gamma x tau so i'm changing the labels of the indices and changing the names of the indices era tau mu and then here i have era gamma alpha so the indices alpha and mu appear here let me stress that this term here comes from the derivative 
of uh, this term here. And then this is equal to, if you do some simple manipulation, you have minus 1 over 4 pi alpha prime, and then you have d alpha x mu plus d alpha x mu, so you can write it as minus 1 over 2 pi alpha prime d alpha x mu like this, which means minus 1 over 2 pi alpha prime era alpha beta d beta x mu. Now we can define pi 0 mu to be equal to 1 over 2 pi alpha prime. And uh, in this case, we have era 0, 0 here. When we put this 0, we need to put a 0 here. But uh, also the other index will have to be 0 because uh, era alpha beta is a diagonal tensor, a diagonal matrix. So we have era 0, 0, which is minus 1. So we get rid of this minus sign. And therefore, here we have x dot mu. So this is the derivative with respect to the zeroth component. And then you can also define pi 1 mu equal to minus 1 over 2 pi alpha prime. And here you have x prime mu. Now we will simply call this uh, term, we will call it pi mu, simply. So this is a definition. And then we will promote it to an operator. We will promote it to an operator just like the coordinates. So the x mu coordinates will become operators. And also pi nu will become an operator. And we can impose the commutation relations just like in quantum field theory. So we will impose x mu of sigma tau pi nu of sigma prime tau so we calculate the commutator at the same time so tau is a time-like component whereas sigma and sigma prime are space-like components and we set it equal to i delta of sigma minus sigma prime delta mu nu Remember that we have set h bar equal to 1, so h bar will not appear in our commutation relations. So this is a generalization of uh, the commutation relation that we have in quantum mechanics between position and momentum. So this is proportional, as you know, to i h bar. And um, in, the, in our case, h bar is equal to 1. And then here you have something like delta ij, if this is xi and this is pj. And here, instead of this uh, proportionality symbol, you can simply put uh, the e equality symbol. So this is a generalization, if you want, that we also used in uh, quantum field theory. But you can try to understand this intuitively because this plays the role of position. Whereas this plays the role of uh, momentum in a, a field theory. And then we also want to impose the commutator between x mu sigma tau and x nu sigma prime tau to be equal to zero. And also the commutator between pi nu sigma tau and pi nu sigma prime tau will have to be zero. Now we want to make use of these commutation relations to find those for the Fourier modes. Remember that we also wrote the solutions to x mu. So we have a solution written with a, a Fourier expansion for the x mu here. And since pi mu, or pi nu if you want, is related to the position, in particular to some derivatives of the position, we can also write the expansion for pi nu. And then we can impose these commutation relations to be true, and we will be able to find the commutation relations between the position, the position for uh, the uh, center of mass of the string that we still call x mu, but we have to be 
careful not to confuse it with uh, this variable. So this is the um, center of mass. This is related to the center of mass of the string. Then we have P mu. This is the momentum of the center of mass. And then we have the coefficients alpha mu n. If you recall the expression for the Fourier series expansion, and we will also have to treat this as operators. So we will have a bosonic theory, so a theory of bosons, because we deal with commutators, not anti-commutators. So you can understand it intuitively. We will continue next time.